Hey guys, Humphrey here. Thanks for being back here. I really appreciate it. Today I want to share a little bit about my background and how I got here basically and how I started my first online business and eventually sold it earlier this year. I'm gonna walk you through the types of jobs that I did after college and eventually how I started my first business by the age of 29 and we actually ended up doing $1.7 million in revenue over three years, which was really great and hopefully you can learn from my experience and apply it to your own life and if you wanna start your own business, for example, or if you just wanna learn from my mistakes. So I graduated college in 2009 from Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. And yeah, I know I just took off my jacket, it was hot. But I graduated in 2009 and I did a few different jobs right after college. I was in customer support for a while for a video game company. And then I actually wanted to transition into being a financial advisor because I thought I graduated with a degree in finance, I might as well just try it out. And especially because I think at the time I was 24, I wasn't really too sure still what I wanted to do with my life. And a lot of people in finance were making a lot of money. And I think at that time, I just really cared about money. And so I wanted to get into finance in any way that I could. Um, in hindsight, obviously, I don't do finance anymore. I mean, I'm into personal finance, but I'm not really into uh, finance as a business anymore just because I'm not that interested in it. But at the time, I thought it was the solution to everything. So I actually became a financial advisor for a few months. Um, I think it was about six to eight months that I was a financial advisor. I was not very good at my job. And eventually I just, I quit because I wanted to find something different and I actually wanted to go back to video games. Right after college, customer support, tried out financial advisory for about eight months. I then became a investment banking intern for three months. Then that's when I realized I didn't really like any of that stuff. And in 2014, I went back into video games. So. I was working at a really popular startup in my area called Machine Zone and I became a monetization analyst for them shortly after I joined Machine Zone in 2014 and that's where I learned a lot about psychological pricing and psychological economic behavior. My job was just to sell more in-app purchases to the customers. So basically, you know, whenever you're playing like Candy Crush or if you're playing Clash of Clans, for example, you'll see those little packages that you can buy with real life money for in-game items. I was the one kind of helping design those packages and trying to figure out what packages would sell the most. That company was really big into real-time data and real-time analytics, so I would leverage real-time data to try to make the perfect package or sales package within the game and eventually sell that to the customer. In 2015 and 2016, this was actually the top grossing game in the App Store. They, we actually had a few different titles that were in the top grossing. So I felt like that that was a really valuable experience for me to have, especially working on the scale of numbers that we were working on. We were selling, you know, close, I mean, these are just millions of dollars per day in revenue. And that's just crazy to me. It's still crazy to me, especially because the business that I started, we, we barely got to a million, million five in revenue over three years. So, I mean, that's basically what my own company used to make in just literally a day or maybe less than a day. So that was super mind blowing to me to work there. And I was super grateful for that experience. Fast forward to 2016, I quit my job at that video game company. It was a ton of hours. I was getting a little bit burnt out and I always had wanted to start my own business before the age of 30. I don't know why it was an arbitrary kind of goal of mine, but I was like, man, I really want to be a business owner before the age, I'm the age of like 30. And to be honest, in hindsight, that doesn't really matter either. Like the whole age thing doesn't really matter. It's never too late to start a business. It's never too early to start a business. Just start a business. I think it's one of the best things that anybody could do for themselves, especially if they have the resources to do so and the risk taking appetite for it. Um, I do understand it's not for everybody, but if you're ever interested in starting a business, I would just suggest starting as soon as you can. So I quit my job in November of 2016 and in early 2017, uh, January 2017, a friend, a mutual friend approached me and said, hey, do you want to start something? And I was like, yeah, sure. What, what do you have in mind? And I think at the time I was ready just to do anything. Like I wanted to work on any project that was going to be my own and I wasn't too confident in myself just yet. So I really liked the idea of having a business partner and having someone that I could bounce ideas off of because I had started many side projects in the past while I was at the gaming company and while I was just kind of doing stuff on my own. And none of them really took off. None of them really got traction because I think I just gave up too early. I think early on having a business partner that can kind of push you through those hurdles, those mental hurdles of man, this is never going to work. 
uh, those types of thoughts is really helpful. So the idea that we actually came up with, or he actually came up with, was to sell these custom posters and these posters of street maps. And I really liked this idea because it was a physical product. I understood the supply chain really well. And I, under just, I just understood, like, listen, if you spend less than you make, you're gonna make money. And there's a certain cost of the goods, there's a certain margin that you're gonna make, and then there's certain marketing dollars that are gonna go into it. So as long as your return on investment on marketing dollars was positive and you're making up for the margin of the actual goods, you're gonna make money. And so for me, this type of business was perfect because it was physical goods. I could figure out a way to market it on Instagram pretty well or pretty easily. And I thought that the business model was really straightforward to me. So I really gravitated towards this project. And in early 2017, we both invested $10,000. Uh, we had a total of 20k in the bank and we decided to get a website developed for us real quick before i move on let me just show you guys the product uh this is one of the products i don't know if you can see this but um it's basically a custom map and the way it works is is you go into google maps and you pick for example this is stockholm i don't know if you can read that but you pick stockholm as a location and then you can move the map around as you wish and get a poster of it delivered straight to your door. So um, that was pretty cool. I thought that was a really interesting concept. And at the time there was only one other business that was doing it online. So I thought that it was a really great thing to get into. So you're probably wondering, okay, you've got this idea, you're developing a website, where do you even get it printed, right? Like that, that was my next question. It's like, okay, who's gonna actually make these things? Because that's one of the biggest problems is, okay, we're, develop we're developing a website to actually make the files and we're gonna to have to transmit these files that are gonna be printed uh, to a printer. So in the beginning, what we did was we explored a lot of options, but in the beginning, we just decided on finding a family owned shop or a local shop around us in San Francisco and trying to see if they would be willing to print our prints and also ship them for us to the end customer. Eventually, we did find one local print and copy shop in San Francisco, and here, I'm gonna like bring up a photo of what that looks like right now. And it was really great. It was a really great starting experience because we worked directly with the owner and we got to print our physical products at his shop and see, like we were able to examine the quality of it like right there on the spot, which I thought was really valuable because even though he was printing and shipping it from his facility, I guess you would qualify that and that would be technically called like technically called drop shipping. It's not traditional drop shipping in the sense that it's coming straight from China. In this manner, we were actually doing it from the United States. We knew our supplier. We could see the quality of the product right there and knew that if he shipped it out, it would get to the customer within three days, which I think is, yes, technically it's a drop shipping model because I'm not physically touching the product, but at the end of the day, it's all within the United States and it's getting there within three days. So I did not think of this as drop shipping at all. Anyway, to give you guys a breakdown of the cost, this local print shop charged us, I believe 20 to $22 per 18 inch by 24 inch poster. So this is the size, uh, this is a 12 by 18 inch poster. So it was a little bit bigger than this, but they charged us $22 for that plus shipping. Uh, and we were using UPS to ship at the beginning, which I would not recommend either because their shipping rates are just too expensive for uh, what we were trying to do. So our cost of goods out the door for a product was about 30 bucks. And we were selling this product for about $55 on our website. And I think that's a healthy margin, but it's not healthy enough. The margin I believe is about 50%, maybe a little bit less than 50% at that point. Anyway, once we figured out the printer and the website was finally done, it was a single product website. So that what that means is, is that the website is just dedicated to selling one product and that was the city maps. And we launched it in May of 2017, and we got our first sale pretty quickly thanks to some Instagram advertising. And at the time we knew a few memers, as they were called in the community. So they were Instagram accounts that made memes. And this is one of the first ways we actually began to market you know, our website was through the meme community. You know, we would pay these memers like $100 for a post and see how it did and see how much traffic it would drive in. So that's how we got our first initial sales and that's how we basically scaled our business throughout 2017 was I would pay an influencer, I would see how the influencer ad would do in terms of driving traffic and I knew that if I got enough traffic in for the amount of money that I spent, based on our conversion rate, I would make a certain amount of money and hopefully cover the cost of the influencer marketing. But one of the issues that we started to run into was actually printing. Uh, our family owned pop mom and pop shop could only really handle about 10 orders per day 
And we were getting to the point where we were probably bringing in five to 10 orders a day at, the, at that point. And this was probably in June or July of 2017. So basically, uh, we were running into a supply side issue and it was clear that we weren't gonna be able to keep up with orders, especially if we wanted to scale it a little bit harder. So in July of 2017, I ended up looking for new suppliers that could handle our volume and could also ship for us and probably had better prices because pricing was a huge problem for us at that point. We weren't making enough money uh, when we were shipping something for $30 and only getting $55 back. So that's when I turned to Google and I actually called a few different printers across the Midwest. I chose the Midwest because they were centrally located and I knew that shipping times you know, to either coast would be pretty quick. And also the cost of goods, I knew that in the Midwest, their cost of goods were probably low because they have a lower cost of living. Eventually I found our future printing partner. Uh, they were called the Blinks Printing in Dallas, Texas. They were really great guys. And you know, I just kind of really liked them on the phone and they were just really nice and they were really courteous and they asked the right questions. And that's how I kind of decided on the supplier. And so what I did was I actually flew out to Dallas. I met with them, I showed them our product and we just figured out a way to start printing from there. And we figured out a way to start printing with them from there and uh, their prices were really great. I mean, now all of a sudden, you know, a poster that was costing us $30 at the door, 25 to $30 at the door started to become like 15 to $20 at the door. And the margin started to make a lot more sense where we could start to afford to spend more money in marketing. So 2017 was all about influencer marketing. All I did was spend money on influencers, see what the return was, rinse and repeat. And I had a rotation of seven to 10 different memers that would post something every day and we would just drive traffic to the website that way. In November of 2017, this is when I realized that this thing is pretty profitable. I mean, I'm gonna show you the stats right here, but we made nearly $100,000 in revenue in 2017 with a profit margin of roughly 15 to 20%. So we were taking home $20,000 after all the expenses, sometimes even a little bit higher. That's when I knew that this business could really scale really well is all, you know, I'm doing all of this marketing just through influencers and imagine if I just, I don't know, tripled the number of influencers or I started Facebook marketing. So fast forward to 2018 and basically the same strategy was was being applied. We were still doing the same thing. I was still doing influencer ads. We started to actually add a few different products to our website, which was really great, but it was actually causing a brand identity issue because our website was called yourownmaps.com and we actually wanted to start to sell different types of items. So the name Your Own Maps wouldn't make sense if we wanted to sell a different type of poster that wasn't a map. So in July of 2018, we decided to change our name to Craft and Oak and that is the name of the business as it is today and that's the name of the business that I sold earlier this year to my business partner. In hindsight, if I could take it all back, I probably would. I probably would have just kept your own maps as its own separate entity and then just created a different website for you know all the different new posters that we were thinking about selling. And the reason is this, in the early parts of July of 2018, we started to make between $2,000 to $2,500 per day in revenue. And I wasn't even doing that much marketing. So it was already getting a lot of organic traction. And that is at the same time that we decided to change the site's name from your own maps to Craft and Oak. And I think that this was in hindsight a mistake because all of a sudden our revenue went from like, you know, 2000, 2000, 2000. And then once we changed the name, it just, it just dropped. Like it went from 2000 to 1000 a day immediately. And, you know, at the time it was fine because it was like a long-term kind of vision kind of thing, but we had never had such a profitable stretch like that in the history of the business like right before we changed the name. So I wish that we didn't change the name, but you know, it is what it is. We changed the name and we en ended up actually starting Facebook ads in August of 2018. And, uh, so yeah, so in August, 2018, we started Facebook ads and we started scaling it a little bit better. Uh, profit margins were getting a little bit thinner because we were submitting so much money on marketing. However, in November of 2018, we actually had a really great month. We had over $120,000 in revenue and January, or December, January, and February were all pretty similar. They all, <laughs> looked like really, really great months. But in March and April of 2018, uh, that's when things started to go a little bit, not bad, but we weren't just, we weren't just making as much money anymore. Um, the profit margins were declining and I think it had to do with seasonality or uh, the time of the year. March, March and April are just generally slower times of year. But at that time, uh, we made a strategic decision to slow down on Facebook marketing and slow down how much we spend on Facebook. And by the end of uh, summer of 2019, we actually phased out all marketing. And I, in hindsight, I think that this was also a mistake. 
Uh, we still had some marketing initiatives going in, at the end of summer 2019, but all Facebook ads had ceased uh, by then. And uh, this was a huge talking point between my partner and I, and I think that you know, if it were up to me, I would have kept marketing, but I definitely understand his position. He didn't want to market as much because it started to cause more stress than it was actually benefiting us. Like we were always worried about how much we were spending versus how much we were actually making. And um, I definitely understand his position. He just wanted a passive kind of business that was always making profit. So uh, definitely understand that. And yeah, some months we were spending a lot of money marketing and you know, for a couple thousand dollars in profit, it almost didn't seem like it was worth the headache. So at the end of the summer of 2019, what actually ended up happening was we slowed down all of our marketing and it just was clear that we were putting in way too much effort for the amount of profit that it was bringing us. It, some, some months we would put in a ton of effort, ton of hours, and at the end of the month, we only had $500 or $1,000 to show for it. And at that time is when I started to look for different opportunities and consulting and freelancing to try to make more of a monthly income for myself. And at the same time, my business partner had moved to Australia where he was starting a new job. So it was just becoming really hard to manage the business together uh, with such long distance. So I wish I had a fun and happy ending for you. Uh, it's not a bad ending by any means, but basically the business started to slow down dramatically through the end of 2019 and earlier at this year in 2020, I decided to sell my stake to my business partner. I didn't make that much money on the actual sale, but I think I learned a lot from the entire process of building this company from scratch, scaling it up, seeing what could go wrong, what could go right. And I have all these learnings for me in the future. At the end of 2019, I also started a TikTok channel where I talk about personal finance and I've just been doing consistently that every day since the end of 2019. And I've noticed a lot of great traction and a lot of great things are coming from that. So I really appreciate anybody that's watching this that came from my TikTok channel. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and on YouTube, I'm trying to post two times a week here and I'm just gonna try to up it to three times a week in the future. But I find that personal finance is a topic I'm pretty passionate about. I love teaching my own friends about personal finance and love challenging my friends to really get a hold of their personal finances. I do think it's a topic that's not talked about enough in schools, so that's why I made this channel and that's why I made my TikTok channel is just to bring more education to those platforms. Eventually in the future, I wanna start another business, so I'm gonna keep you guys updated on that, but uh, in the meantime, I'm just making personal finance videos, I'm making uh, TikTok videos, and I'm trying to just become a content creator, entrepreneur, type of person. So I hope that you guys learned something from this video. I know that I'm not the most successful person out there that you could be listening to, but I am still on my own personal entrepreneurial journey and content creator journey. So I'm glad that you're here with me. And if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, please do. Uh, I make videos here twice a week, as I said before, and I'm trying to try to up it to three times. So I would love if you guys are joining me on my journey and please comment any questions, please shoot me DMs. I have my own Discord channel where you can reach me. It's the link is in the bio, uh, not the bio, the description below. I just love hearing from all you guys. I love making these videos and at 20,000 subscribers, which I don't know, will be in how long, but uh, at 20,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do something special like eat a cake on camera or maybe I'll eat 20 donut holes or you know, one for each thousand. But um, thank you for being here. I know that uh, it, you took some time out of your day to be with me. So thank you. And I'll see you next time.